What role does volume replacement play in treating shock? Why are current practices often ineffective? What can we do as clinicians to quickly reverse shock? In simplest terms, shock is a medical emergency in which the organs and tissues of the body are not receiving an adequate amount of blood. Today, I'll introduce you to LifeFlow Plus and share how clinicians in any setting can improve volume resuscitation when minutes matter. We know that early resuscitation in patients with shock and hypotension improves outcomes. LifeFlow provides rapid and controlled fluid delivery when minutes matter, enabling clinicians to deliver precise boluses, quickly determine fluid responsiveness, and titrate as needed. This enables you to improve ED throughput, time to diagnosis and disposition, all with a device that's familiar and easy to set up and use. LifeFlow is an easy to use handheld device for rapid and controlled delivery of blood and fluids for patients with shock with conditions from trauma, sepsis, cardiac arrest, to anaphylaxis. We've all heard the term resuscitate before you intubate. Consider life flow for resuscitation in OB emergencies such as postpartum hemorrhage or ectopic pregnancy or in the perioperative setting with hypotension. Regardless of the setting, persistent shock equals worse outcomes. The chart on the left references delayed resuscitation complications in the perioperative setting. We also know that every minute of severe hemorrhage leads to worse outcomes. A single episode of hypotension increases traumatic brain injury mortality. Hypotension is the single biggest risk factor for peri-intubation cardiac arrest. And a single episode of a systolic blood pressure less than 100 in the ED setting increases the odds of mortality with sepsis by threefold. The bottom line is earlier resuscitation saves lives. Numerous studies support early volume resuscitation for septic shock. Patients with septic shock who receive 30 milliliters per kilogram in the first three hours have lower mortality, lower ICU length of stay, and lower risk of innovation in the emergency department. This is particularly true for patients who are at high risk of fluid overload, such as the elderly, obese, those with congestive heart failure, or end-stage renal disease. The graphs on your right show a decreased risk of mortality and reduced ICU length of stay with effective volume resuscitation. Interestingly, those patients that received 35 to 45 milliliters per kilogram showed the lowest risk of mortality. And the benefits of volume resuscitation aren't limited to the hospital setting. In fact, earlier fluid resuscitation in the pre-hospital setting improves mortality in septic shock with the greatest benefit seen in hypotensive patients with a systolic blood pressure of less than 100. In keeping with the pre-hospital setting, we've learned from the last 20 years of sustained military combat operations that early transfusion saves lives. Hemorrhage is the number one cause of preventable trauma death. Every minute of delayed transfusion increases the risk of mortality. Outcomes are improved when resuscitation is initiated at the point of injury. The blue line in figure A represents the odds of 24-hour survival when the transfusion is initiated within 15 minutes. The red line shows a significant decrease in 24-hour survival if transfusion is initiated after 15 minutes. Figure B shows that if transfusion was delayed beyond 16 minutes, the outcome appears to be fixed. Now let's talk about the limitations of traditional infusion methods. Gravity and infusion pumps are slow. In the hospital setting, if a physician orders a fluid bolus for your patient, most often that fluid's put on an infusion pump at a rate of 999 mLs an hour. Let's do the math. It will take one hour per liter of fluids to be infused to the patient, if you have good vascular access. On a smaller IV with a pressure bag, that time may be 30 minutes. In the EMS setting, gravity and pressure bags are often our only option for infusion. Recent studies have shown that on average, agencies are only able to administer between 3 and 400 mLs during transport. And then we have rapid infusers. These large, non-portable, expensive machines are often very large capital purchase items. They require a significant amount of staff training, can be complex to set up. The last thing you want to see during the middle of a trauma resuscitation is a colleague struggling to set up a rapid infuser while they desperately need blood. 
In addition, rapid infusers and pressure bags work poorly with small gauge vascular access. This is where LifeFlow Plus can improve your resuscitation efforts. It's fast, three to 10 times faster than the other methods we just discussed. It can be set up in minutes by a new user. You can transfuse a unit of packed red cells or 500 mLs of fluids in less than two minutes. It's convenient. It's lightweight, portable, and able to be used in any environment from the point of contact in the field through the trauma bay and the OR in the hospital setting and can move with the patient throughout the continuum of care. It has one-handed operation, freeing your other hand to do other life-saving procedures. If fast and convenient weren't enough, let's talk about reduced risk. The air check reduces the likelihood of an air embolism often associated with pressure bags. The closed system reduces the risk of contamination that's often associated with push-pull. The chart on the left clearly shows that you can complete an infusion with LifeFlow significantly faster than these other methods. Let's look at the three main benefits of resuscitating a critically ill patient with LifeFlow. Resuscitate. Quickly and easily deliver a unit of blood or 500 mLs of fluid to your patient in less than two minutes to stabilize. Reassess. With LifeFlow's rapid delivery, clinicians are able to assess the patient's response to the infusion in minutes to quickly determine next steps. Reduce. Using LifeFlow throughout the course of care, clinicians can make diagnosis and treatment decisions faster and reduce the risk of mechanical ventilation. In a recent published economic model, the potential ROI impact of adding LifeFlow to your protocols was significant, including up to 121 less ICU days, $1.5 million in aggregate savings, and a 12-fold return on the investment. Beyond the economic benefit, LifeFlow is incredibly easy to set up and use. We all know that caring for critically ill, emergent patients is incredibly stressful, especially for new nurses. Using LifeFlow, even new nurses can be trained and proficient in volume resuscitation in a matter of minutes. Even after more than two decades of direct nursing care, there is nothing more rewarding to me than providing an intervention to your patient and watching that intervention have an immediate positive effect. With LifeFlow, the resuscitation and improvement happens right before your eyes. Now let's talk about LifeFlow in the pediatric population. Push-pull is a method most commonly used in this setting due to the size of the IV catheter and the limited amount of volume we want to deliver to a pediatric patient. If you've attempted to use this method, you know it's incredibly difficult to push the syringe and to deliver fluid through those smaller gauge catheters. Now, using LifeFlow, clinicians can deliver fluids down to a 24 gauge IV for crystalloids or a 22 gauge for blood products rapidly and easily. In addition to being cumbersome, the push-pull technique has recently been shown to increase the risk of vascular access contamination. Because of its design, LifeFlow protects the syringe and plunger from contamination by a user's hands. We've covered many of the benefits of using LifeFlow for rapid controlled volume resuscitation. If you'd like to learn more, there is additional information available on our website or through a variety of peer review articles online. Since it was introduced to the market, LifeFlow has been used more than 15,000 times in a variety of settings. From the military and the battlefield, through critical care, air and ground transport, to the hospital in emergency departments, intensive care units, operating and OB units, across patient populations ranging from pediatrics to geriatrics. And we've received numerous awards and recognition. The feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. We've spent some time talking about the many benefits of rapid volume resuscitation with LifeFlow. Now let me show you how quick and easy it is to set up. First, I'll unpackage the tubing and handle set for LifeFlow. Take the tubing out of the bag. I will close both clamps, spike both bags. and begin to prime the tubing after opening my clamp, squeezing the air check chamber four to five times or until full and purged of air. Now I'll take my syringe, 
pinching the canopy at the pinch points, loading the syringe with the white plunger in the blue slot and the milliliters pointing upwards. At this point, I'm ready to prime my tubing. I'll give three to four quick squeezes. And I'm ready to connect to my patient. I'm now ready to begin infusing with life flow, monitoring the patency of the IV with the initial squeezes and throughout infusion. Each squeeze delivers 10 mLs of fluid or blood. When I'm ready to switch to blood, I close my saline, open my blood, prime the tubing with a single squeeze. Now we're infusing blood to the patient. It's that easy. New users can expect to set up and infuse with LifeFlow in under three minutes, while the experienced user can do so in approximately one minute. For more information on LifeFlow, please visit our website at 410medical.com.